you need somebody to love Just look into my eyes I'll be there to make you feel right If you're feeling sorry inside I really sympathize Don't you be sad, just call me tonight So let's start mixing. Before we actually do the mixing, I'll let you know about my setup. First of all, I use Pro Tools, and for my converter, I use Lynx Aurora, um, Aurora 8, and I also use Inward Connection Summing Mixer, so I do analog summing, and for the insert for the analog summing, I'm going through the Warm Audio um, Poltec Clone, because it's just going through, but it gives, you know, the tube sound and stuff. So, let's start looking at the drums. First, like I said, all the drums are what I bought. I, I just did editing here, like, uh, you know, put them together. But as far as the plugin goes, here is how it sounds without nothing. It's really good as it is, I think. So um, I'm going to pretty much make use of that. But one thing I didn't like about is the kick sound. Um, I think the Beatles has a little more rounder kick sound. So I replaced kick with Slate Digital Trigger. And I'm using Ludwig kick to it. and. It became something like this. It's much rounder tone and EQ, not much. I'm just getting rid of um, low sub stuff because Beatles recording, you don't really need too much sub. Um, they don't have that kind of thing we do nowadays. So that's the kick. Oh, by the way, the loop loft, this sample I bought, this is the drum track that Matt Chamberlain played, and um, they give you so many microphone choices, and I'm sure Beatles didn't use that many, so I got rid of, rid of um, lots of sound, like kick, hi-hat, tom, floor tom, U67, kick sides, I just muted them. I don't use them. And as it, you know, it gets too modern if you have all those things, I think. You hear everything so clearly. The things I kind of liked was these Altic and horn and bullet. It gives you really cool vintage sound. Here's Altic. Horn. bullet. So I'm adding a little bit of these guys to it. I'm, these guys came with the um, loft loop. I'm using room, I'm using overhead, I'm using snare bottom and top, and kick out, that's it. And for snare, this is, this is how it came. And I noticed when I put all these drums together, the kick is everywhere, so it kind of adds up, and I didn't like that, so I gated the kick out like this. But now I have the choppy snare, so I wanted a little bit of decay for the um, snare, so I compressed it. Now it has a little more decay, I think. And EQ, I added 
220 low and 7k and 12k a little bit and so it kind of sounds bigger but still thick right then i took it even further with this red plugin by waves ivy road um adding more high end and low end gives more bottom and top so it basically gets rid of mid right because you're boosting high and low so that means mid is getting low and i put kind of a lot of drive to it so that's the snare sound snare top and snare bottom pretty much similar so those are my snares let's move on to overhead i didn't do much except there was weird resonance so i got rid of that this is how it came and i heard something weird around um 700 so i got rid of that okay and room same thing with room this is how it came and also um the reason i'm getting rid of like around 800 or 878 is because that's where a kind of vocal sits so you don't want to fight with vocals too much and get like mashed so i'm getting rid of those and that oh here oh sorry here's the frequency i was talking about earlier um this is the weird resonance i was talking about 442 sorry i take it back and here we go So yeah, like I said, the drums sounded great to me as it was. So I'm just EQing to make space for other instruments because drum can dominate the whole thing, I think. And that's not always good. And I'm adding all these altic and stuff. So just drums by themselves, it sounds like this. Now, that's pretty cool, however, um, I wanted to give it a little more thickness and groove to it. So what I did is this, I'm bussing all these drum sound into one aux channel and compressing it like a lot. You'll see it, this SSL um, compressor, here we go, this engaged. So I'm adding these very compressed sound, parallel compression, they call, I guess, uh, just a little bit. I'll turn it up just for the sake of this. Right, so you hear really almost like crazy drum sound, big, but you don't want that much. So I'm adding a little bit to give it a thickness. Okay, so that's the drums, um, pretty simple. When the source is good, it's kind of easy, I think. All right, yeah, I highly recommend that Loft Loop. It is a sample, but it, it's real, by real drummer. It's basically a Pro Tool session, yeah. So here we go, um, let's move on to bass. Here's our bass. This is how I tracked using Rickenbacker 4003 and Vox Super Beetle. It's pretty good. I actually like the sound itself that I tracked, but in the mix, it was almost too present. 
So the thing about the Beatles' original recording, especially the early ones, is like you hear everything as one sound. You don't really hear、um, separation too much. I mean, you hear it, but not as much as current recordings. And, like, for example, John Lennon's、um, rhythm guitar, if you don't pay attention to it, you almost don't hear it. And even if you do pay attention to it, It's kind of there, but when it's taken out, you'll notice, oh, I'm missing something. So that's kind of the beauty of the early Beatles stuff to me. So to me, this bass sound is great, but it's too distinct. You can tell that it's there, it's、um, too much. So I wanted to let it sit in the mix a little more, blend it in the mix more. Better. So, first, I got rid of again just low end because I don't need sub. Then, compressed it with LA28.、Um, like this. this is just to control and EQ. I got rid of 220 and I got rid of 1242. So, this 1242 is where I heard as a bass, too much bass. So, I got rid of、um, that area a little bit. And 220 was、um, when I heard it all together, it was kind of crowded. So,、um, I wanted to give space, that space for something else. I think I gave it to piano or something. So, that's why I got rid of it. And. I added the low end because I cut a lot of low end, but by adding this, it kind of gives you a different kind of low end. It sounds bigger, but it's not making it muddy. And I, this worked, so I liked it. So this is with all processing. Without With. So it sits in a different, different space in the mix. And that's what I really care about nowadays.、Um, of course, the tone is very important, but where it sits is almost as important. Even if you get the same kind of tone, the sound itself, if it sits in the wrong place, Place, it almost sounds different. So、um, I'm trying to manipulate where it sits in the mix. So that was the bass. Moving on to classical guitar because it's coming up.、Um, this is how I tracked. Okay, now just get rid of the bass, low frequency, and So, this sounds a little too、um, clean to me.、Um, Beatles recordings are sometimes, if you really listen closely, not that clean. A lot of things are distorted, but it's a good distortion. So, I wanted to give some distortion with this. Right? Without. The, this already gives you the vibe. See how much I'm pushing. So that gives me the cool distortion and compressing more with Fairchild, Fugue Child. And finally, EQing it. What did I do? I just got rid of the mud in the around 300. And、probably was too loud, so I turned it down. Yeah, by the way, I did all the mixing first, and I just、um, bypassed everything to show you the step. Yeah, it's like a cooking show, right? Okay, moving on to acoustic guitar. Similar concept with a classical guitar. Here is nothing.
So when I tracked this one, I had in my mind that, okay, acoustic guitar is not going to take up so much space. So I cut a lot of low and、um, added high to make it kind of thin. So you heard the thin sound that way.、Um, it, I kind of want it to work with hi hat, blend with hi hat very well.、Um, in the original recording, you don't hear much acoustic guitar, but it's there. It's that kind of thing.、Um, again, you know. It's there, but you shouldn't hear too much. And again, I still got rid of more, even more low end. I even got rid of mid around 350 because you don't want the mud and giving the vibe with Kramer tape. Without. With so that's the acoustic guitar. Moving on to piano. Piano actually was the most difficult one. It somehow took up so much space, and here is how I recorded. This was basically fighting with everybody else. So, first, I wanted to make sure it doesn't fight with bass, and I wanted to let it sit、um, above the bass, so you know it doesn't fight. So I got rid of below 146. Then. I wanted to control the attack and the decay a little bit with a compressor, so it's a little more consistent. Right, somewhat faster attack and faster release,、um, compressing ratio eight, and EQ. So again, I wanted to let it set above the bass and below. Anything else? So what I did was first I got rid of around 200 or 215, and then what is this one? 1.5k. I got rid of there because that's where you can fight with vocal and guitar and stuff. So I got rid of that, and it became like this. Now compare with no processing. With it's much cleaner, much clearer. So I like it. That's the piano. Then moving on to electric guitar. Um, electric guitar. This was hard because、um, you know it's a. You would think because it's high frequency, very high notes. So、um, you you wanted to hear it on the top of it. But、um, if you listen to the original recording, it kind of sits in the middle. So first, I wanted to make sure it sounds not in your face, kind of further in the back. So that's why I used、um, spring reverb to track. Um, to record, and that wasn't even enough. So I first got rid of low end, and then compressed it. Right. Then EQ got rid of three hundred. So this EQ made it far, made it sound kind of further, but still I need it to sound right. So first I put it in the Ocean Way. This is a great plugin I like.、Um, I record in my room, but if you go through this, it sounds almost like you recorded at the Ocean Way Studio in Los Angeles. Here we go.
it's subtle, but I really like it. See how far the microphone is? The microphone I'm putting is like 18 feet away from the guitar. This is how the studio looks like. And I'm adding more reverb. Um, going into this reverb, I'm cutting below 600 and um, above 6K. I heard that's what they did in the Abbey Road. And going into Valhalla, vintage verb, to give it nice tone to it. So that's the guitar sound, electric guitar. I'll sh play you without any processing. With EQ compression and reverb. And this sits better in the mix, I thought. So that's the electric guitar. Oh, another thing. I have two electric guitars when he plays the, when I play the riff, little riff, this one. So because, because this is a riff, you want to hear it um, clearly, but because, because I made it kind of far in the mix, it doesn't come through strong enough. So I added another part. I mean, there are two reasons for this. One is to make it come out more, but the other reason is to get the 12 strings feel to it. So it works for both this um, double tracked guitar. Here we go. I'm just getting rid of the low end on this one, nothing else. So one is closer, one is further, gives more um, presence in the mix. All right, so that's the electric guitar. And finally, we're going to vocals. This is how I tracked, I double tracked it. Here we go. If you need somebody to love, just look into my eyes I'll be there to make you feel right If you're feeling sorry and sad Alright, this is something I want to talk about as a Beatles fan. Um, this is what I found out um, as I closely listened to the original. It's, I know, I'm pretty sure it's not intended thing, but hap something that happened, but it's kind of cool. Um, if you listen carefully, this is what's happening, especially you can hear it in the stereo mix. So I'll play each track. Make you feel right. Sorry and sad. So it drops off. And the other track. Make you feel right. If you're feeling sorry and sad. Also drops off, but on a different spot. And together it gives this. To make you feel right if you're feeling sorry and sad. You can hear that in the original recording, and I like these things, so I recreated that as well. I'm sure it wasn't intentional. Anyway, so that's the um, little thing um, I found out as I did this project. Um, so let's just look at each vocals. I'm doing the same exact processing, so just look at the one. First, I'm going through this red console again to give a EMI vibe and getting the high and low out a little bit um, that way you keep the mid so you know I didn't touch much um, mid on other tracks so that's because I want the vocal to sit not too high not too low but kind of you know in the center and that's why that's my intention at least whether it's working or not that's my intention and more eq um just getting rid of around 200 where there was mud um that's probably my mic or i was too close to the mic or something and fairchild compressor this works great if you need somebody to love just look into my eyes right without if you need somebody to love, just look into my eyes. With? If you need somebody to love, 
just look into my eyes. And I did the same. I just copied all the setting or all the plugins to the to the other track and make it like this. If you need somebody to love, just look into my eyes. All right, and the vocal definitely needs reverb. And one first thing I did, same thing with guitar. Um, I put it in the ocean way, so give it better room sound rather than my room. Um, in my room, I try to record it dry so that it doesn't give bad acoustic. And then if you go through Ocean Way, it should give you somewhat real studio room, good acoustic sound. So here's with Ocean Way. If you need somebody to love, just look into my eyes. Without. If you need somebody to love, just look into my eyes. With. If you need somebody to love, just look into my eyes. Right, so it's subtle. Um, well, I'm making it subtle because I don't want to give it too much. Then it gets out of place. And so that's a room sound, but then I wanted to give the echo chamber reverb sound. And that was hard to create, but I tried my best. So here we go. First, just like the other one, I got rid of below 600 and above 6K EMI trick. And going to re real verb. I don't know if this is an amazing reverb, but I don't have too many reverb plugins. That's the problem. But you can work with it. So here is how it sounds with real verb. If you need somebody to love, just look into my eyes. This would be probably okay if I were trying to make a current record, but I'm trying to get the Beatles vintage sound, so this doesn't work for me. And I was like, uh, how can I do this? And any other plugin didn't work just by itself. So instead of finding the right plugin, I decided to create um, using this Echo Boy Jr. I just added Echo Boy after the reverb. Um, give the satur saturation and studio tape mode, cut a lot of low end, cut a little bit of high end, and like this. This worked. If you need somebody to love, just look into my eyes. See, now the echo sounds a little more, little older. Listen to the tail. To love, just look into my eyes. Right, without Echo Boy. To love, just look into my eyes. I With Echo Boy. To love, just look into my eyes. I'll be there to make you feel right. Right, this definitely glued the vocals much better in the mix. So that's my um, processing for each tracks. And now, Let's put them all together and listen all together. Oh, by the way, um, for my mix bus um, from the very beginning, I'm going through Waves API compressor 2500. Um, I just use preset, this one, mastering one, and I just set it so that it gets like 2 to 3 dB gain reduction using the, you know, playing around with the threshold. Then I use Waves L2. This works great for anything. Everybody loves it, right? So I have those um, from the very beginning. So you kind of get the thicker compressed sound from the very beginning. And this is how it sounds. How it sounds. If you need somebody to love, just look into my eyes. So it's pretty good, pretty good, but um, I wanted to do a little more on the uh, mix bus. First I got rid of low sub and added this um, UAD Studer 
um, tape machine thing and has a nice preset called Vintage. And this sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So you kind of have to try it. But this particular song, it did work very well, very nicely. So I'm putting it in. Um, this is with. If you need somebody to love, just look into my eyes. I'll be without. If you need somebody to love, just look into my eyes. With. If you need somebody to love, just look into my eyes. Right. It's works great and but also one last thing i added was for the mix bus like i said um, i'm doing an analog summing um, using inward connection and inward connection um, mixer has an insert and i'm putting insert um, right now what you heard you don't have the insert but um, after this you'll hear um, after inserting Ampex 350. I have the Ampex 350 tape machine. However, it's not going through the tape. It's just going through the electronics, um, the preamp of it. So it gets the, you know, Ampex um, transistor or tube sound, whatever that is, but it worked. Um, that's the thing. I don't know what's going on, but it worked. So um, here's the basically final version of this song. Uh, I'm going through Ampex. If you need somebody to love, just look into my eyes. I'll be there to make you feel right. If you're feeling sorry inside, I really sympathize. Don't you be sad, just call me tonight. Thank you very much for watching my video. Peace on love, peace on love. If you liked my video, please subscribe. Also, if I get good responses, I may do more of these. So if you have anything good to say about this, please comment in the comment section with peace on love. Thank you very much. Peace on love, peace on love.